Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of September 3rd, 2018. The weekly top three is a regular segment on the Michael Duke Show. I join Michael on the show each Tuesday morning, now from 6.20 to 7 a.m., for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. The show broadcasts on Facebook Live and via streaming audio from the show's website weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud pages, and on my website at bgkeithley.com. You can find past episodes of the Weekly Top 3 also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, our criticism last week of Mike Dunleavy's use of $4.3 billion as a good target for the operating budget sparked some pushback. This week, we respond to that and explain why we believe the sustainable budget number is significantly lower. Second, we analyze a new ad by Governor Walker's campaign that claims he had to cut the PFD to create a sustainable PFD. We conclude the ad is just another attempt at creating an Alaska version of George Orwell's Newspeak. And third, some argue that this generation is entitled to use up all of the fiscal reserves the state has without worrying about its impact down the road. We discuss whether the Alaska governor and Alaska legislature have an obligation to future Alaskans, and if so, whether they are meeting it. And now, let's join Michael. Joining us every week is Brad Keithley, who is the director and founder of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Uh, He uh, comes in to help us dive deep into the numbers and to understand exactly what it is that we need to know in in the in the course of what's happening with the budgets and now we're going to analyze some poli- politics as well because that's all part and parcel of what's going on let's get into the top three uh to, of this week we'll start off uh with uh with this just change in attitude this change in uh, in talking points you know you and i have talked for a long time about uh, the ICER report, the sustainability issue, you know, Scott Goldsmith and and everything that he kind of brought to the table to the legislature. And we talked about this number that was the sustainable number, which meant that we could stay at that number and not have to generate new revenues, not have to do new taxes. Uh, again, this is the number that a lot of people adhered to early on in the, the session, about two or three sessions ago. They said, oh, yeah, we can hit that. And then, of course, they never wanted to cut when it was their project. Uh, but now we've heard this new number uh, where it started to be 4.1, 4. this, 4. that. Uh, Mike Dunleavy has said 4.3. On this show, he said, well, he's like to get down to under 4, but doesn't know if it's doable. You are starting to, I think it sounds like, doubt uh, where Dunleavy is, is truly headed on this. Give us your thoughts on your number one here uh, of your weekly top three. Well, so last week, you and I talked about, or one of my top three was was Mike Dunleavy's uh, uh, new commitment, because he's previously talked about sub-four numbers. He's talked about getting the budget down into the threes. N- apparently, new position of going to 4.3, that's appeared in a couple of places uh, where he's done where he's done interviews. And I criticized that. I said, that's not a sustainable number. Um, and I had a lot of pushback during the week uh, from people saying, oh, 4.3, that's doable. Um, so I, so I've started digging into what the what the current sustainable number is. The last time I did an analysis uh, was in the middle of of 2017, or at the end of 2017, rather, uh, looking forward to the to the 2018 uh, budget number, and and that uh, number was um, was 4.01. Uh, 4.02, I think, is what the number was. That's what I was coming up with at the time, using, frankly, 2016 data from the Energy Information Administration on oil prices. Scott Goldsmith, uh, I'm off a year. I did that in, in October of 2016. Scott Goldsmith then did an update, uh, his update in 2017, and he came up with 3.5, uh, 
uh, billion is the sustainable budget number, and that that's based on that was based on uh, oil price forecasts coming from the state, which frankly I think were 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 run down a little bit for political purposes to show that we were in worse shape than we were, but but he came up with three point uh, three point five. So neither of those numbers are at Dunleavy's uh, 4.3. I've dug in. Uh, I, I had been doing some preliminary work up to last week on what the right number was. I've dug in uh, to the number uh, deeper uh, this past week, and I'm, I'm standing by what I said on the show last week. It's 3.75, uh, 3.8 uh, tops. And here's, here's the reason. There are three things, four things, that drive the sustainable number. One, oil price. Two, oil production. Three, what the rate of the permanent fund draw is. Uh, remembering Hammond's 50-50, 50% for the PFD, 50% uh, for government if government uh, needs it. And so the draw affects that other 50%, the 50% going for, for government. And the fourth thing is the status of our fiscal reserve because what a sustainable budget is is we have highs, we have lows in revenue draws. Um, and and a sustainable budget tries to cut through that and says, okay, when we have lows, we're going to use our fiscal reserves to fill in until we get back to highs, and then we're going to save the highs above the sustainable budget number and refill the reserve. Well, the problem is we've drained the reserve, and so we have no fiscal reserve. We've drained the SBR. The CBR is almost gone. So we have no fiscal reserve to really fill in the low we've got, and that affects uh, how low you can go. So looking at those three things, the oil prices, the oil price forecast that I used uh, when I did the, the analysis in 2016 and, and relied on the July 2016 energy information uh, projection, the oil price is actually down from that. Now, EIA had forecast we were going to get to $80 by 2020, and we're still very well on track to do that. In fact, we're approaching $80 uh, again today. But the EIA has modified has modified its forecast going forward from 2020, uh, and said that future oil prices are not going to be as robust as they had projected in 2020, or in 2016. The rate of growth that they had projected in 2016, year on year, the real rate of growth was about 3.9 percent. Now they're projecting a real rate of growth of about 2.4 percent. So that affects the sustainable budget. That affects your long-term look uh, at what revenues are going to be in the future and and what your highs are going to be uh, and what your lows are going to be. Oil production is somewhat is somewhat higher from what we used in the 2016 forecast, but you've got to take into account a lot of that increased production or a lot of that additional production is coming from federal lands, where the state gets no royalty, zero royalty. And from new wells that are subject to a, a part of the tax code that says we will have very low taxes on new wells for several years to sort of to sort of provide an incentive for those to uh, to build up. So yes, oil production's up, but that doesn't necessarily mean revenues up to the same extent. PFD draws are about the same as we forecast as we used in, in 2016. The fiscal reserve that we used in 2016 saying that we had a CBR, we could go, we could, we could weather the low by using the CBR to fill in the gap. The fiscal reserve is almost gone. So when you combine those three things and look at the revenue, the, the, the long-term stream of revenue that produces, uh, the sustainable budget number is down from what we talked about uh, in, uh, in, in 2016 and from what, ta and from what Scott talked about uh, in early 2017. Uh, we're, we're just we're, – we're, we're lower. We're at 3.75. So for, for Mike to talk about 4.3, and, and really one focus, one piece on the 4.3, that 4.3 isn't really 4.3. That's 4.3 operating budget. Right. It doesn't count capital. Right. So if you add capital, capital in, that's 4.5. So we're talking about a difference of 800, 700 to $800 million uh, between the two numbers. That's material. And for Mike to be talking about 4.3, which is really 4.5 once you add capital, that just way overshoots what we can what we can uh, support on a sustainable uh, from a sustainability standpoint. Now, what I've had him on the program here, Mike Dunleavy, we're talking by the way with Brad Keithley from Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget. Uh, when I've had Mike Dunleavy on the program, I specifically ask him about that both here and when I was hosting uh, for Steering and Anchorage uh, filling in. 
uh, because I, you know, because we've had this discussion many times that that number, you know, the, the number has got to be in that right area because otherwise what's happening is Dunleavy is opening himself up for challenges from uh, Baggage or Walker on, okay, well, how are you going to fill this fiscal gap? How are you going to fill this, you know, can you just live out of the savings? Uh, because I think that's been Dunleavy's answer so far is that he would live out of the savings um, uh, of the CBR, the SBR, even the ERA savings in the meanwhile until everything catches up. The problem is, of course, is that at 4.5, it really doesn't catch up because with the rate of inflation and everything else, that number just continues to increase. Uh, so he, but he did acknowledge that he'd like to see sub three or sub four numbers, um, and I don't know if he just thinks that he can't get the support for sub four, or if there's something else going on here. But I mean, I think this is this is a, a serious issue. It, it is, and cutting to the chase, if he really think if 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 he and and I. It, it, there's somebody else advising him on this number. This this is not a number that I think Mike Dunleavy came up with on his own. But if 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 whoever is is, is doing these numbers think you can support 4.5, you can't. I mean, the numbers just don't support 4.5 as a sustainability number. And all you're doing is running us deeper. If you if that's the budget number you go into your your governorship with, you're just running us deeper into the ditch. Yeah, uh, we we've, we've already drained the SBR. The CBR is almost gone. Um, and the and the and the next place you go uh, in terms of savings is the earnings reserve account, the, the the portion of the earnings reserve account that is that's not in the permanent fund corpus, the port the part portion that can be used as uh, appropriated by the legislature. And what you're doing really then is you're running down, you're starting to affect PR, PR, permanent fund draws because you're running down the the investment pool. Uh, that that the permanent fund uh, uses to generate earnings. So lower investments, low, a lower permanent fund amount means lower investments mean lo- lower long term earnings. So you're you're just really eating your seed corn. You're just you're just running yourself into the ditch a different way when you start draining out uh, or using the ERA uh, above the draw. So what what Dunleavy? I mean, uh, <laughs> what what we got to face is that at that number. Dunleavy's really talking about long-term taxes. We can't sustain that number, and either we're going to have to have taxes, PFD cuts in taxes, uh, other taxes, to, to, to meet that number going forward, or we're going to be draining down the ERA in a way that future Alaskans are not going to be able to support themselves uh, in the way that we've supported ourselves in the past, and they're going to have to tax themselves uh, to pay for it. We need the old Mike Dun- I, I said this on the show last week, and I'm saying it again. We need the old Mike Dunleavy back. We need the old Mike Dunleavy that talked about, I'm going to cut costs. I'm going to get us down into the $3 billion range. We need that person to come back uh, for this campaign, and we certainly need him back. Uh, by the time, uh, if he's elected governor, hopefully he's elected governor, by the time he takes office as governor and comes up with his own budgets, if he proposes a budget of 4.3, 4.5, we're just back to the Parnell era uh, where re- Republicans ran us into the dish. Right, exactly. Brad Keithley's our guest. That's our number one here of our top three. And, again, I think it opens him up for problems. The one thing that I see that he's been weakest on when challenging uh, his uh, his opponents is really in some, in some real statistics and details on where he's going to cut, what he's going to do, how he's going to get there, and I think he needs a. I think he needs a solid plan. I think he needs a Brad Keithley in his court, quite honestly, to be able to get that done. Uh, and maybe that's something that we can try and, and, and facilitate here. I'll be the matchmaker or something because we've got to get this back in there. Uh, let's talk about the number two here before we. Uh, we're going to go for another minute here before we uh, hit the break. So, uh, give us uh, give us a tease on number two of the top three. Bill Walker and Byron Mallott have a new ad out that's, that's, a, that's a laborer, uh, it's labor focused, talking about uh, that Bill Walker gave us a sustainable budget or a sustainable PFD. Uh, if I have a choice between a sustainable PFD and a, and a short term, larger PFD, uh, I want a sustainable PFD, says, the, uh, uh, says the, the person on the ad. And so that raises the question did Walker really need to cut the PFD in order to give us a long term, sustainable PFD? The answer to that's no, uh, and I can explain after after we get on the other side of the break. But that ad is getting a lot of airtime. 
uh, and and we need to proof check. We need to fact check him. All right, Brad Keithley is our guest. We're going to continue with him for his weekly top three right after this. Don't go anywhere. Let's jump back into it now. Brad Keithley is our guest. Alaskans for sustainable budget. We were talking about his weekly top three. Uh, let's get uh, let's get back into this, Brad. You were just talking about this new ad that uh, Bill Walker and company have put forward, and I wanted to play, folks, just the one part of the ad that um, that that I think uh, really does the really hits me the hardest on it, and then I'll get your analysis on it. Here is the part of the ad that really kind of uh, burns my cookies uh, in the in the other end of this. Let me let me hit you with it. Sometimes things are out of your control, and I think that's what happened when the governor took office. Man, we handed him a barrel of rusty bent nails, and I'll be doggone if that guy didn't straighten those things out, clean them up, and you know he's got the framework up now. I can tell you that PFD helped me get through some extremely difficult years. That the governor made that decision so that we could continue to get a PFD. In the short term, people are going to hammer him. But if you, if you had to ask me which one I wanted, a big PFD or a sustainable PFD, I'm going to go sustainable every time. Okay. So I counted on that PFD in the years that it was, you know, when times were tough. Uh, but, uh, you know, but now, I mean, it's, just, it's sustainable versus, you know, a big PFD. Wait a second. I mean, what is this zero-sum game? And first of all, you counted on it when times are tough, but now you're doing okay. What about the rest of us that are, you know, struggling and trying to count on it when times are tough? I mean, I just, I find this thing so full of logical fallacies, it's laughable. It is, and it's, and it's, uh, it's Walker's attempt uh, we were talking about this on the break. It's Walker's attempt to put a to put a word up on the board that he thinks will sell well, that he thinks that has pulled well. That word sustainable, uh, and and then they sort of sit down in a meeting and they try to back in. How can we create a storyline so at the end of that story we can use that word that we that we've created something that's sustainable? Here's the point: the PFD was sustainable. The PFD will continue to be would continue to be sustainable. There wasn't anything wrong with how the PFD was working. It's based on earnings from the permanent fund, five-year average of earnings spread out over Alaska residents that, that qualify for it. Um, and, and it was working then. We are continuing to have earnings from the permanent fund. That thing would continue to chug along, as Governor Hammond intended, in perpetuity. It would continue to, to spill out those, those money wells that we created with the permanent fund, would continue to spill out money. Uh, and it would continue to, to uh, be able to be calculated into a PFD in perpetuity. The thing that went wrong, the thing that was not sustainable, is not sustainable, is government spending levels. And so in order to support these unsustainable government spending levels, what the legislature and the governor did was go in and raid the PFD, cut the PFD in order to divert more money over to government and, and in order to prop up uh, government spending levels. It wasn't the. It isn't the PFD that's not sustainable. It's government spending that's not sustainable, and it isn't. It isn't Bill Walker's great achievement of of finding a way to sustain the PFD. It's Bill Walker's great failure that he didn't come in and either uh, cut spending levels, uh, work with the legislature to cut spending levels, or find a less harmful revenue source to prop those spending levels up. This isn't the PFD's fault, and it isn't some great achievement to maintain the PFD. It is entirely uh, the other side, the government's fault, uh, and they're raiding the PFD to try to prop it up. The PFD was and remains sustainable. We don't need to be messing with it. Right. Again, to use the numbers that we talked about, again, this disingenuousness of, you know, his formulas and his uh, his you know his graphics with a crashing airliner and all this kind of stuff uh none of that takes into account the fact that this pfd uh that the, the that the fund is self-sustaining because it keeps depositing money back in and if we are only taking our 50 percent as they are supposed to that the, the component that causes it to be taken over the course of the years is that spending problem again it goes back to do we have a revenue problem or do we have a spending problem the bottom line is we have a spending problem in this state and have had one for many, many years. Yeah, and it's 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 the height of we, we had a we had a discussion on this in an earlier show. It's the height of George Orwell's nineteen eighty four newspeak 
to call what we did to the PFD something that we had to do to make it, quote, sustainable. That's, that, it, we, the PFD was perfectly sustainable. It's government that wasn't sustainable. Uh, and in order to prop up government, we've, we've raided the PFD. It's not the PFD's fault. It's not the PFD's problem. This guy, and the guy in the ad, his children and grandchildren should have the same opportunity, same benefit he had when they go through hard times. But Bill Walker stealing it from them by cutting the PFD, and and he's he's helping Bill Walker steal from it by by arguing that that's somehow uh, sustainable. It's not. Brad Keithley is our guest, Alaskans for Sustainable Budget. We're talking about his weekly top three. That was number two. Uh, again, government having a spending problem rather than a revenue problem, and it doesn't matter what kind of pretty face you put on it, what kind of uh, uh, you know high speed video that you try and show it with. That is still the bottom line. Number three, does the governor and the legislature, do they have an obligation to future Alaskans? And if so, how are they doing? <laughs> well, so here's a debate I got into last week that, that I think is a very important one. My argument is that, or my point is, this legislature and this governor are responsible not only to current Alaskans, but they're responsible also to future Alaskans. They're responsible to hand down to future Alaskans, a, a future that is at least as good as what was handed to our generation. This is the same point that, that, that we make at the federal level from time to time. And the pushback I got was, no, no, every generation, every generation has to fend for themselves. We've got a bunch of money now. We should be able to spend it uh, on ourselves, and future generations need to look out for themselves uh, in terms of how they generate money and in terms of of, of how they spend. That's all on them. This generation is entitled to do whatever whatever our bank account uh, gives us the ability to do. Well, that's not true. I mean, the, the Section eight Section eight point two of the Alaska Constitution says the legislature shall provide for the develop, utilization, development, and conservation of all natural resources belonging to the state, including land and waters, for the maximum benefit of its people. It doesn't mean just the people who happen to be here right now. It means all of its people, this generation as well as future generations. And that's what Hammond did with the PFD. He had, the, he had that vision. He cites this section when he talks about the permanent fund. Uh, creating the permanent fund, it is it it was created for 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 the benefit of not only current Alaskans. Oil is a depleting resource; it may not be that it won't be there uh, as much in the future. It was created to turn oil wells into money wells, that and then use and then have those money wells, the investments that the permanent fund would make, producing money in perpetuity for not only this generation uh, and future generations. To do that, we have to manage the state's fiscal situation not only for the benefit of this generation, but also with an eye to future generations. That's what the sustainable budget number calculation is. It is a calculation of the number that if we spend it today, we can continue uh, based on the assumptions we've got today. If we spend that amount today and only that amount today, we can continue spending that amount uh, on into the future. It's the same, same basic philosophy as we've got uh, under, the, uh, under the permanent fund itself. Anybody who tries to say, oh, no, but, you know, we're getting all these earnings today and we're having, you know, all this CBR. Uh, we had all the CBR handed to us. We get to spend all that. And, and you know, the millennials or the Gen X that come next or the millennials that come after that, they're on their own. They, they, they have to do what they, what they want to do. Right. That's, just, that's just wrong. Uh, but, it, but it's a philosophy that, that, frankly, I think underlies a lot of what the Alaska Senate uh, a lot of what the Parnell administration did in overspending beginning in 2010, a lot of what the Alaska Senate has done by continuing to overspend, um, approving overspending since that time, uh, the, the concept that now we're just going to cut the PFD rather than worry about future generations and preserving the PFD as it, as it was for our generation, preserving it for them. Uh, we're just going to cut the PFD and keep, uh, keep uh, state spending, current state spending high. It, it, is, it, it is a problem. Uh, that I think uh, Alaska is suffering from. And we need to focus on the fact that this government needs to govern not only for the benefit of the current generation, but future generations as well. That's your three of the top three. Brad Keithley's been our guest. Brad, I got about 60 seconds here. If you want to do a full wrap up on the top three, give us your highlights and, and where do we go? Well, sustainable budget number is is not 4.3 as 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 Mike Dunleavy is banding about. It's about 3.75. Uh, 
he needs to get on board with that with that with a lower number. We need the old Mike Dunleavy back. Second, Walker didn't save the PFD. The PFD has been doing just fine. What Walker's been trying to do is save government spending levels by stealing from the PFD. We shouldn't let it get get him get away with that. Third, the legislature does represent future generations. We need to recognize that uh, every in everything this this government does. All right, Brad Keithley, thank you so much, my friend. As always, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Michael, thank you, as always. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the Weekly Top 3 from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube and SoundCloud pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.